Facts, we live in that luxury. My niggas be drilling the life as a villain. We work trying to flip at that peso. I lost my nigga, think about him every day. Selling let a day go. She wanna fuck, I just want the top. So I show the shorty his case closed. We took two hours, turned into a dub. We learned how to switch up that angle. Switch up that angle, take a shot on her booty like bangles. Allergies are acting up. I just cut myself. Right. Deep ass cut. Don't worry, I cleaned it with, I think it's called hydrogen peroxide, I think. I don't know. The one that doesn't burn. But, yeah. I either clean cuts with alcohol, or I think it's called hydrogen peroxide. Um, then I bandaged it. It was deep. Deep, but I'm, I'm okay. Oh, and the reason I'm I switch angles or my position is the sunlight, you know. So I'm trying to get more light on my face. So, yeah. Uh, I should have probably just set this up before I press record, but that's okay. Sup? Go. Yeah. So I lived in Astoria in Ravenswood houses in the 90s. Okay. I was friends with the mailman, who was a really cool guy. Right. His name was Rich. What happened after New Year's was crazy. And for months, I saw this man deteriorate into a killer. God damn! Rich was an all-around cool guy. Wait a minute. He wait, 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 wait a minute. Years was crazy. Wait. His, his name was Rich. Oh, sorry. The reason the reason I keep blinking my eyes really hard. Well, there's two reasons I do that. Because irritation of the eyes, which is right now because of the allergies. And the other reason is because um, I'd be tired. But right now, it's because the pollen and stuff is just, oh, crazy. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, my no. There's a whole lot going on right now. But, hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cut. Okay. It happened after New Year's was crazy, and for months I saw this man deteriorate into a killer. So for months, you saw this guy. I don't know what deteriorate means, but you saw this guy basically go from happy, loving, caring person to a killer. Right? You saw the process. So why didn't you do nothing about it? Wait. Yeah. Why? This shit kind of like... No, most of the bleeding stopped, but it's like, it's sensitive. But why, 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 why didn't you do anything about it though? Like, either you could have done two things. Right. Hard ass like a mother clucker. Or... Kind of got you could have got him some help, or call the cops on his ass. Rich was an all-around cool guy. He was a good-looking, charismatic mailman who delivered mail around our neighborhood. His baby's mom lived in my projects in Ravenswood houses. He would say hi to everyone, and on Christmas, no matter how poor people were, they often left him a tip and cash. Rich had a dark side to him that involved a fight where he beat his baby's mom and got arrested. Oh, wow. God damn it. I was going to say, um, people can relate to that. Everybody can relate to that until 
he said what he just said about beating his mom. No. Right. I was going to say that people can relate to having two sides. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody has a different side to them. So, yeah. But as far as, like, everybody having a side where they're just, they're just like, abusive. Probably, like, a select few. Not definitely not everybody. I'm not like that. But I, you know what I mean? Everybody has two sides to them. So, yeah. In order, he broke her orbital bone during an argument. Her what? During that oh. year, his girlfriend would often walk around with two black eyes or a swollen cheek. He was beating her. Oh my God. He did not show up for two weeks because of some departmental procedure suspending him till they found out what the case was about. I saw him two weeks later and Rich was less cheery. The new year brought him a child support garnishment for his kid and legal problems, not to mention problems regarding custody. A few months passed and I had noticed him staring into the distance of the hot sun. He did not look good. His long stares would be longer and longer and it would take his name being called three times for him to respond. Everyone around the area Heard he had broken a court order and beat his girlfriend again. Rich was not the cheery, charismatic man we had once known, but something darker. This, this is, um, this is like saying you don't know what everybody goes through. You know what I mean? This is like saying people putting on a show. Like, just because somebody maybe may look, you know, happy. Or, or, you know what I mean? Looking like they're having a good time. Or, you know what I mean? Maybe looking good or whatever, smiling. That could all be a show. That could all be a front. Until they get home. Right, close that door. It's a whole different person. So you never know what somebody may be going through. Or what somebody may be maybe is like doing at that point in time, like right before your coworker gets to work, they probably just did something clucked up in every sense of the word. Or they probably like, like, I don't know, man. Like, like for example, we got this new girl, right? I'm not saying that. But she she's the she's a girlfriend of a GM at another Chipotle that I work at. Right? So say for instance we got a GM at a Chipotle that's in a whole nother city. Right? His girlfriend works at our loc at my location. So, she got cuts, right? Like, like a good majority of cuts. Not no regular cuts. Like some, you know, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like, she got some cuts on, like, her wrist on both sides. But... Whenever she's at work, she's a <laughs> she's giggly, she's happy, happy. You know what I mean? Like she's she's like I don't know. She looks like she's putting on a show, but I can see the pain. One day coming out from work, I see a Telemundo truck with Eyewitness News Channel Seven and a New York One news fan. Rich killed his wife God damn and seven-year-old and 13-year-old stepson. Both heads were chopped off. The kid's penis was found in their mouths. Both heads were in a closet. They lived two buildings down from me, and my friend was their neighbor. Cops sealed off the building. Rich tried to slit his wrist, but failed and was taken by an ambulance. After detectives left the crime scene two weeks later, and everything was concluded, 
We snuck through my neighbor's yard, who lived next door, to the crime scene. All the action took place in the kitchen. There were trails of blood from the living room leading into the bedroom, like the bodies had been dragged. The bedroom had a broken door, but we didn't go inside. This was before crime scene cleanup came. I had nightmares for weeks. There was a boy who lived in my building who was seven, who was friends with Rich's kid. He became completely traumatized after he heard about his friend's death. His mother encouraged me to talk to him, since he looked up to me as a big brother. I remember he asked me, why do people hurt kids? I could only say, because they are sick in their heads. He sobbed in front of me and I, of course, comforted him. From that point on, I had trouble sleeping for a while. Going in the actual murder scene made things much worse. I will always remember a blank stare when I joked around with him. It was like he was staring through me. Oh my god, it's dark. Um, so, I forgot where I heard this from. Hold on. I'm sorry, I have to do something. Hold on. Um, okay, so I forgot where I heard this from, right? But a simple smile can go a long way to somebody else. You know what I mean? Or saying, how are you? Or how you doing today? Or... Like, complimenting somebody off their, like, simplest things or simple smile or wave or, like, the simplest things can make the most difference in somebody's life. Whew. So, I'm about to get real dark right now, real true. Going to going to your coworker and just being like, you know what I mean? You look good today. Or I love you. Or giving giving them a hug. Uh could stop them from doing something bad to themselves or to somebody you know i don't want to get into like specifics but y'all know what i mean like for example at my first location i've been with chipotle for six years at my first location this is the one i the location i work at now i this would be my one Fourth location in six years. So, I remember one day I was on the line making the people's food. And I don't know if I, I, don't know if I said this or somebody else said this, but I remember the reaction. We... Somebody said something to a customer. It's like, um, hi, or how you doing today? Or something like that. And at the time, you know, we didn't have to wear masks or anything. So I'm guessing the smile on the worker's face and their whole like attitude and vibe made the customer feel really good. And she was like, I thank you, I needed that. That's enough. That, the simplest things can make the biggest difference. That's all I'm trying to get at. But there's always signs so just look out for signs. Um, and if you're in a position to help somebody, then do it. And if you're not, still try to help.
there's there's more there's more ways you helping somebody like I don't know how to explain it like you can help somebody without you helping somebody like you you know what I mean like you you don't have to be the person to help Physi I don't know how to explain it help somebody that's all I'm saying I'm saying Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you, stay happy, my family.